Hello, hello, it's Monica from Crafting with Kling Lady and I hope you have an absolutely fabulous day. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create three art palette shaped cards using my new collection, Color Your World. First, I'm going to show you how to create that shaker card, which is super simple. Then I'm going to show you how to create that art palette shaped card. And I decided to use art palettes in a smaller version to create that square card. So now you can see how my collection looks like, and it is called Color Your World. If you get the design papers, you get 20 A4, beautiful, colorful, with some amazing patterns that you can use for a variety of projects. And in the collection, you also get one sheet of A4 sentiments as well. So as you can see, those colors are very vibrant and bright. So you can use them for a variety of projects. If you want, you can use any cutting dice from your stash to create your projects. But to be honest, if you get the full collection, you also get SVG files that you can use for any electronic machine, including Cricut, Scan and Cut and any other machine as well. And I also included PDF files if you don't have electronic machine. So yes, you can create those shape parts even if you don't have Cricut or Scan and Cut machine. As you can see, here are some very beautiful patterns you can use for a variety of projects. And I also included one sheet of 30 sentiments you can use for a variety of projects. I also have like birthday wishes and any other sentiments. So here is PDF I printed and this is the art palette card and it comes in two sets. So we've got the base panel and also the design paper. In two of them, we also have the hole, and that's what I'm going to use for my first card. So here is the back panel, the front panel, and that will create the shaker element. So as you can see, I also cut those paints here using my scan and cut machine. If you're interested in getting my collection, I left all the links in the description down below. So for the very first week of launch, it is 50% off. So please check it out. I'm pretty sure you'll like this collection and I really hope you'll feel happy when you create something with my design papers, SVG files or PDF files. So here I'm using my Distress Oxiding to add a little bit of color on all the edges here. So this way we do have a little bit more interest. Now it is time to create that shaker element. So what we need to do is actually to get an acetate. And my very first thing whenever I add any acetate on my project it is to use a red liner tape. And I think that really makes a difference, especially in shaker cards. Have you ever created art related shaped card? If you haven't, maybe this collection is for you because you can give this card to anyone because there are so many different sentiments in this collection you can use for literally any occasion. And whenever I use red liner tape to create shaker elements, I always use my pokey tool to burnish it even more. And I think that would really makes a difference in all the shaker cards. Do you like making shaker cards? If you haven't tried this one with the art palette, I really hope you will give it a go. It is so much fun and you can also create it in any size you want. So these cards will go in 6 by 6 inches envelopes, but if you get the SVG files, you can also create that shaped card in a bigger size, like 8 by 8 inches, and that will be perfectly fine. Now I'm putting my acetate here and using my scissors, I'm trying to cut the shape. But if you make a mistake here, don't worry, you can always fix it when you adhere it with the red liner tape to a white card, and then you can trim it even more. So when this is ready, I'm going to peel off the backing of the red liner tape and adhere the acetate. And to make the shaker card shake, we need some double-sided foam adhesive. And then I'm going to add some sequins because I like them. And to make this card even more special, 
<laughs> also going to add some design paper from that Color Your World collection. So as you can see, this cut comes together pretty quickly. Now it is time for the acetate and also double-sided foam adhesive. And whenever you add it, I do encourage you to add few drops of liquid glue, then that double-sided foam adhesive, and then a few drops of liquid glue later on. And this way, all the elements will be there forever for you. So as you can see, I missed a couple of spots, so I'm going to add even more double-sided foam adhesive. And when this is ready, as you can see, I do have variety of colors here. And this is, to be honest, it is very old in my stash. I have it for a couple of years, and to be honest, those sequins literally last forever. So I'm trying to have, um, let's say, purple, pink orange and then I repeat the colors because I thought that would be a good idea and will give that card even more interest. If you do like creating shaker cards, what is your favorite shape? I'm really, really curious. And if you would like to create a shaker card with that art palette, that would be so amazing. So now it is time to actually cut some smaller elements from my design paper, and I'm going to adhere them on top here. And this way, all the sequence will be exactly where they want to be. So as you can see, you don't really need any SVG files or cutting dice to create this card. All you have to do is to look at the shapes and then try to use your scissors to cut that shape. Super quick and simple. And later on, we are also going to put the back paper that you can see in the top left corner. And what I really like about this collection, you can create any rainbows of your choice. They don't really have to go in like normal order, let's put it that way, but you can also mix and match all the colors to make them even more special. And if you ever get your sequence on your double-sided foam adhesive, I do encourage you to use your pokey tool, because then it will be so much easier to move them around. So as you can see, I also have those two colors here. And if you look at the design papers, they do have a lot of texture on them. And that's what I really wanted to achieve in my collection. If you haven't seen my video from yesterday, the link is at the top right corner. And I will also leave the link at the end of this video. So yes, you can check the whole collection. So now it is time to put it on a white card. And our card is nearly ready. But at this point, I thought let's decorate it even more. So what I'm going to do, there are also some other elements in this collection. But first, using my scoring board, I'm going to create a top flap, and that will be the back of my card. Now it is time to fold and burnish it, and use my liquid glue, one and only magic glue, and this way the card will be complete. But as I told you, I really want to decorate it even more. So in the PDF files that are included in the full collection, you also get paintbrushes set that you can fussy cut. But if you get the SVG files, you also get those as well. And you can resize them to match your projects. So here they are. As you can see, I also have some alcohol markers on the left. But with those paintbrushes, what I did, I used... Um, pencil and I wrote the first letter of the color because if you get my SVG files they are color coded so let's say one paintbrush is green with all those elements the other one is blue and so on and then when you put those pencil marks it is so much easier to match them together and I do encourage you to do that as you can see here, I've got a scrap piece of paper and it is time to color in all those elements. Using tri-blend markers, it makes it so much easier to do because this way I'm going to have some lighter and darker tones, which gives me that 3D look. As you can see, I also mix and match all my alcohol markers. They are not all tri-blend markers. But if you're looking for a very good storage solution for your alcohol markers, at the top right corner, I left the link to my box I created for those pens. So yes, you can check it out. Now it is time to put the paintbrush together. And with the brush here, the very top one, I left a small element here. So it is easier to attach all those elements here. So the paintbrush is ready. If you have any excess of the glue, you can always use your pokey tool and that will be perfectly fine. Now I'm going to color 
all the other paintbrushes, and for this cut, I decided to have slightly variation in the paintbrushes colors. So I'm going to have some green, blue, but also purple. I really like that combination, so I thought for the very first cut, using my color, your world collection, that would be a good choice. Have you ever created a card for someone who likes art or painting? If you haven't, maybe this collection is for you. So as you can see, I'm using my tri-blend marker here to color in the top of the brush. Super simple, because you do have that lighter and darker tones. And again, it is time to put those elements together. And as I told you, if you get SVG files, you can make them as big or as small as you want. Now it is time for the final paintbrush here. And as I told you, I decided to use purple. To be honest, purple and green is my totally favorite color combo. But if you put a little bit of blue in between, that makes a nice ombre effect. So that's what I wanted to achieve on my first card. And again, I'm using some gray alcohol marker to represent that metallic top of the paintbrush. If you like this, I really hope you'll use the same technique when you get my collection. And if you haven't seen other crafters creating beautiful projects with my collection, I left the links in the description down below. So then you can see the video from Rebecca and also Monica from Paper Mona and Eva from Eva Kreativnie. And you can find all those links in the description down below as well. Now it is time for a sentiment and for this one, I decided to use a dream big. You can also use your scissors, but you can also use your cutting dice as well. However, here I decided to use a round punch and this way I will have a little bit more interest on my card. So yes, you can use that trick in your card making as well. To add a little bit more interest to the whole project, I'm also going to use the same Distress Oxide ink I use for the art palette. And this way, all the elements will match. So what do you think about card number one? Would you like to give it a go? Now I decided to add a little bit more dimension to the sentiment, so I've got double-sided foam adhesive. And this way, all the elements will really match together and they will stand out beautifully. Now it is time to adhere all the paintbrushes and the card will be complete. And to be honest, it is a little bit like a rocker card. So yes, you can rock it if you want as well. But to be honest, it also stands proudly on a flat surface. So the card is complete and there is plenty of space to write your message inside. And what's the best thing about it? It is a shaker card and I absolutely love it. So it rocks a little bit and yes, you can write as long or as short message inside. So the first cut is complete. Now let's move on to cut number two. So now I've got that template art palette and I'm going to cut all those paints here because I thought, why not? Let's give it a go, right? And I really like how they look like. So here is my base for the cut. These two are exactly the same. And then we have to create our card. And for this one, I use 300 GSM White Melty Purpose Card. All the names of the products I use in today's video, you can check in the description down below. Now I'm using the same Distress Oxide ink to add a little bit of color on all the edges. And I think that really makes a difference. So now you can see all the paints here. So I'm going to do a dry run because I really want to make sure that all the elements will be there where I want. Now it is time to use a liquid glue and you're not very sure where to put your elements. I do encourage you to use any liquid glue because this way you will have time to maneuver the elements and that would really makes a difference. So now I'm going to adhere the front panel on the card base and as you can see the holes really match here which is super super cool. Now I've got three paintbrushes and again I use my pencil to write the first letter of the color in the SVG file. Now I'm going to remove it with my eraser and then color them in. So if you do get my SVG files, trust me, they are 
amazing because you can create lots of different shaped cards and on Tuesday I'm going to have another video with my Color Your Happy collection so yes you can check how to create even more projects. So as you can see this time I decided to go with warmer colors because I thought why not the first card has some cool colors so now let's create some warm colors. It is summer coming in the end so I thought why not let's give it a go right? And when these elements will be ready again I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue magic glue to put them together. But if you want for the paintbrushes, you can also use a red liner tape and that will be perfectly fine. If you want to have proper uh, professional finish to your paintbrushes, you can also use those alcohol markers on the edges of those elements. And this way no one will ever know that you use alcohol markers on a white card. So I do encourage you to use that trick as well. So as you can see, those elements come together pretty quickly. And if you haven't created any card for someone who likes colors or art, please do it because they always put a smile on the recipient's face. Now it is time to put all those elements together. And as you can see, with this collection, I've got six paintbrushes and there are all different sizes. And also the tips are different so you can get beautiful elements to decorate your projects. So this collection is not only for making cards but scrapbooking as well. And I do encourage you to play with whatever is in your stash because every day you can create something absolutely stunning. So now I'm going to use that hole to put the paintbrushes inside and they actually look like a real art palette. I just couldn't resist. So yes, that is the option for you here as well. So when these are ready, I just want to make sure they are adhered properly. And when the glue sets, we can put one more layer to create the back of the card. And again, I'm going to use my scoring board from Crafters Companion to create a top flap. Now it is time to fold and burnish it and put those elements together. And when these are ready, it will be time to choose a sentiment from that sentiment set. And as I told you, there are 30 of them, so you can use whatever you want. So when this is ready, I decided to use that let your dreams lead you, because I thought that would be perfect not only for someone who likes art, but also for someone who who's trying to get a new adventure, like new work or new school, for example. So I thought that would be a good option. And what's really good about this collection, you can also personalize it as you want. So you can put the name of the recipient or use the colors from the collection that the recipient will like. Now it is time to add a little bit more dimension on the project. And again, I'm using my pokey tool and then a few drops of liquid glue because this way this card will last forever. And that's what we really want. So as you can see, this video is pretty long, but I think in the end it is worth it because I'm going to show you how to create three different cards using one SVG file. So now it is time for card number three. For this one, I'm going to use a square six inches card base and I'm going to open it at the top. I thought that would be the best option. So first I'm going to have a black square to create a white border using my card base. Again, I'm going to use my one and only liquid glue, magic glue, because that's what really makes a difference here. And when this is ready, now it is time to add a little bit of paint. So I thought, why not? Let's create something like three by three here. And this way, we're going to have very beautiful color variation. So you can use anything from this collection to create this cut as well. You can use the SVG file to create those paints here, but you can also use the PDF and you can cut the elements out and then use them as a template and keep it with your collection. But you can also fussy cut them the way you want. So now I decided to add four paintbrushes and I'm going to use my alcohol markers to color them in. And now it will be time to put them on a card. So I thought that would be a good idea to separate all those paints here. If you like it, please let me know in the comments down below. 
So now it is time to put those paintbrushes on the card, but as you can see, I really wanted some of them to overlap and to have that 3D look to them. So I'm using like a weaving technique here, and I really like the look which I achieved here. So if you do get those paintbrushes, the possibilities are endless. You can create so many beautiful projects. You can play with the shapes, the sizes, and I'm pretty sure you will create something beautiful with that color, your world collection. And don't forget that in the description down below, I left all the links to the collection, to the design papers, SVG files and PDF files. Now it is time to put a sentiment, which in this case is thank you. I'm going to make those fish tail here, because I thought that would add even more interest. And again, I'm going to use my Distress Oxide ink to add a little bit of color on all the edges. When this is ready, it will be time to add a little bit more dimension using just double-sided foam adhesive. And at this point, I thought all those paints look pretty dull. So what we can do to make this card even more interesting? So using that SVG file art palette, I created some smaller palettes. And I think that would really makes a difference on this card. So as you can see, I'm going to have eight of them here because in the middle, we do have that sentiment. So now it is time to assemble the elements on the card. And when these are ready, I thought it is too plain. I need to add something to sparkle, right? And if you know me, you know how much I love gems. So at this point, I couldn't resist. I just had to use the gems to create those paints on the art palettes. And here they are totally finished. So what do you think about cut number three? Do you like it? Do you like the way I use the art palettes on the paint? Please let me know in the comments down below. Now you can see two other cards I created and I would really like to know which one is your favorite. Which one would you like to give it a go? Please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and spending that time with me. Don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Have a wonderful day and don't forget that I'm going to have a new video tomorrow for you on my channel. Happy crafting! Bye for now!